Well, this is really exciting. For the past six years or more, when I write about swimming pool pumps or I blog about them or I make one of the 1,000 videos about swimming pools that I've made, this pump in particular is the number one most talked about, most endorsed, most recommended pump that I've ever talked about. Today I have one and we're gonna unbox it together. So what pump is this? This is the Hayward 1.85 horsepower variable speed TriStar swimming pool pump. There's a couple of different models and makes. This one in particular is a dealer protected item. You can only get this pump from your local pool and spa dealer. And it has a couple of unique features that aren't available on other similar pumps, which are available on the open product line or on the internet or something like that. So this is the, the SP32900 VSP. That's the pump that we're looking at and we're going to be unboxing together today to see exactly what you get when you purchase one of these pumps. Before I even get into this, what makes this pump in particular one that I endorse so heavily and have traditionally endorsed so heavily through my videos and swimming pool blog articles? Probably in a word, versatility. There's a lot of different pumps out there and they do different things. Like a, to a swimming pool owner who doesn't know a whole lot about swimming pool pumps, they all kind of look the same. They all have a similar horsepower rating. You know, is there really any difference? And the truth is, is that there's a huge difference. They're all application specific stuff. A medium head pump versus a high head pump. These are two totally different things. They'll work completely differently on your pool. And very likely one is the right pump for your pool and one is not the right pump for your pool. And that's for every single pool out there. So this pump is probably one of the single best that I could name, which can you use it on two inch plumbing? Yeah, you can do that. What about two and a half or three inch plumbing? Yep, it works for that too. Well, I've only got inch and a half plumbing. Will it work for that? Well, you're pushing it because it's a pretty powerful pump, but you should be able to use it for that as well. What if I've got solar on the roof or I've got a really big complicated system with a, a pump filter, heater, salt chlorinator, other devices? Is this pump gonna be good enough to do that job? And as much as it's hard to answer that question because it's something that really needs to be answered on an individual pool basis, best performed by a pool and spa professional that's in your backyard. But speaking in general terms, this pump is gonna fit more of the average swimming pool than pretty much any other pump I could name. If I had to put my finger on one of the most important reasons why, is it's because this pump is extremely powerful. It has a hydraulic design that it moves an incredible amount of water for a relatively small amount of power consumed. That in and of itself makes it a pretty fantastic pump. But in addition to that, it's got some other features that kind of put it ahead of other pumps that are in its class. And the thing I like best of all is the reasonable size. When pool owners shop for pool pumps, largely they shop based on horsepower size with the mentality, Bigger is better, must be bigger is better, right? And seldom is that the case with a swimming pool pump. For the most part, they're all way too powerful for the average pool out there. And when I, if I were to evaluate 100 existing swimming pool filtration systems, probably like 60 to 80 of them have a pump which has been replaced at some point from the original pump, probably upgraded in power or capacity, and now is essentially too powerful for this filtration system. That happens all the time. This pump is a great middle of the road pump. If you don't have a super robust or big filtration system, this pump's probably gonna work. But if you have a very demanding filtration system with a lot of pipes and maybe they're larger in size, this one's still probably going to meet the amount of flow that you need. It has a very impressive performance curve. A pump performance curve is something that every manufacturer puts out along with the equipment. And it lets you know for this pump in particular, how much water you can expect to move for a given resistance to flow, like 30 feet of head resistance to flow or 60 feet of head resistance to flow. And when you look at that granular information, it really allows you to make an apples to apples comparison with swimming pool pumps. And this one, to me, is right at the top of the list. I love this pump. I'm so excited to have it. Thank you, Hayward, for sending me this pump. Up until now, I've been buying, testing, and reviewing pumps for pretty much nine years here in a ever evolving, you know, series of videos on swimming pool efficiency and performance for swimming pool pumps. 
Hayward sent me this pump and I couldn't be happier about it because now I'm going to be able to talk about this pump, which I've been talking about forever, but now I'm going to be able to hook it up to the test lab. We're going to be able to monitor how much water it moves and how much power it uses, how loud it is. I can't wait to get into all of that. So without too much further ado, let's just go ahead, crack this open and see what's in the box. Don't throw this away. Keep this thing forever. I mean, they're available online as well, which is very convenient nowadays, but read through this thing. It's useful. There's a ton of important information that's going to help you as the owner of the swimming pool pump. Quick reference guide connecting pump to Hayward Automation, DP selection switches, uh, the configuration menu. So this is basically just a quick reference chart that's going to do some of the most basic setup installation to get you up and running as quickly as possible with this pump. Depending on your level of comfort with technology, this is a computer controlled pump and you might be overwhelmed by it. And if that's the case, then this is going to be helpful to you to kind of know, what do I need to do right now to get this going? Kind of like a bare bones information guide. Neat. Okay, so there's a couple of different things to talk about here right away. Communication cable. You don't need this if you're operating this pump as a standalone swimming pool pump, uh, which is to say you're going to interact with it through this control pad that's located back here in terms of setting your programming and changing speeds, things like that. But if you want automation for your pool, which is more and more common these days, you would use a data communication cable to communicate between the different pieces of equipment. Now this pump in particular being the one designed for standalone use is not compatible with, with that level of automation. What you would need to do is buy the same pump with the ND after that. ND means no display. Instead of this display being located here, it would come with a false cover which goes on there and then you would use communication cables to uh, relocate your Either you can use the actual display here remotely located or more likely use your automation control interface, whether it be an app or a, a fob or something like that. That's commonly how would, you would use these pumps. This is the standalone pump. So for the most pools out there, this is the one that you would be looking at. So it's got this base. What the heck is going on with this thing? Well, this is just going to help to seat the pool pump, make sure that it doesn't rock around too much. Do you have to use this? No, not everybody does, but it's definitely a good idea. You should do it because otherwise your pump it's going to be all loosey-goosey rocking around. There's a lot of pipe hammer with powerful pool pumps, and as it's moving around and vibrating, you want to have a stable platform for it to sit on. See these holes here for bolting it down? Should you bolt down your pool pump? Well, I mean, I can't answer that question for you, but I can answer it in this way, perhaps. The average residential swimming pool pump is not bolted down. The average commercial swimming pool pump is bolted down. So use that information to help you make an informed decision for what you want to do with your swimming pool pump. These are unions. So that is for your suction and your discharge ports here. And that's how you're going to make your pipe connection to this. Some pumps you have to buy a set of unions externally that, you know, they don't come with the pump with this particular model. Obviously they do, uh, which is great, super convenient. And they are, let me just open it up for you here couple of O-rings there and two union connections. So we only need to talk about one here. I'll just put the other one down. So this, these are the two components here. We're going to plumb pipe into here. This is a two inch port or two and a half inch on the exterior side. And then we've got this little gasket here. The gasket sits into a receiver on the flange of the intake and the discharge. Now I want you to take note of something here. This gasket is very dry. It's brand new, there's nothing wrong with it. We could plug it in there and tighten that union down, probably gonna work just fine. But it is a good idea anytime that you're installing a new swimming pool pump or even servicing an existing pump, and you notice that a gasket or an O-ring is dry, you should apply a silicone-based lubricant to it. You should not use Vaseline. That's something that we've seen in the industry for decades. It's petroleum-based and it will destroy these materials over time, whereas something like a silicone-based uh, O-ring lubricant will not do that. You don't need to go overboard with it. It's kind of thick stuff. You want to put it on and then take as much of it off as you can with your fingers, and then you will be good to go to place your O-ring in place. 
and then make your union connection. And now we're ready with this pump in theory to go ahead and plumb two inch pipe into it or the outside being a spigot fit for a two and a half inch fitting. If you're not sure what that means, give me one second and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. I'm back. Okay, so here I have two inch PVC pipe. Here I have a two and a half inch PVC fitting. So the PVC pipe is going to solvent weld into here or you can use two and a half inch. Like let's say you have a very large swimming pool system and you're going to use two and a half inch pipe. Well, or first of all, this is an advantage to have this pump because most pumps are not going to have this natively sized port here. It's going to be smaller and probably doesn't fit two and a half inch pipe. But this one does. You can glue two and a half inch pipe right on to these union fittings. Now you wouldn't want to do what I'm doing here and use a 90. That's just what I had. You would commonly use, you know, a coupling or something like that. And especially on the front, same thing. You wouldn't want to put a 90 on like that. You would want to put a coupling so that you can fit onto this and adapt your two and a half inch. And then you want to have about five times the diameter of the pipe in a straight run in front of the suction inlet. Let's talk about this strainer basket. One of my favorite things about this pump in particular is it has a very large strainer basket. If you have a swimming pool which has a lot of overhead trees or organic debris leaves that blow into your pool all the time, if you have a tiny little strainer basket, you're going to have to be out there every 48 hours or more cleaning that thing out because the pump's going to be starving for water because it's choking on all these leaves. Whereas with this pump, the, the wet end chamber, like it's gigantic. I could climb in here and take a nap if I wanted to. And if you, you know, go and look at your swimming pool pump and you don't have one of these tri TriStar pumps, you'll probably notice that yours is not anywhere near to as large as this. That is a huge advantage for these uh, pumps. It doesn't apply to every swimming pool, but the ones that it does apply to, it's very important. We'll talk about the control interface for just one second here because one of the most common questions that people have is right now I would have to be standing behind the pump to operate this. And you might have a different pipe configuration such that the keypad would be upside down for me on my swimming pool. Does this thing rotate? Can I change the orientation? And you can. You can change this in four different orientations for 360 degrees total. So no matter what your pipe configuration or the configuration from your uh, pump filter heater, you will be able to orient the keypad in such a way that it's going to be convenient for you to interact with it. This pump at 1.85 horsepower is very powerful and it's intended for 230 volt applications. Remember earlier when I said that this pump is the one that it, you buy from a brick and mortar dealer, a swimming pool and spa professional. One of the advantages you get for doing so is that this pump is dual voltage rated. This pump is rated for 230 volts, but if you had 115 volts, for example, let's say you have that now, you plan to upgrade it later, but for the moment, that's all you've got available for your pool pump your options are going to be limited for the number of pool pumps that are available to you to buy because there's just not a lot of them in the market and certainly not ones that move a lot of water. But this one sure does. I mean, it moves less water at 115 volts than it's going to move at 230 volts, but you can install it and use it now at 115 volts. One day in the future, when you upgrade your electrical service to your pool pump area, you can now change the connection to be a 230 volt connection and you are going to have a more powerful performing pump that moves more water than before. This is a great option. If you currently have 115 volts, you need a pump now, but you plan one day to upgrade to 230 volts. So I talked about this pump being, you know, available from a brick and mortar dealer only. Only pool professionals can provide this pump to you. You can get another version of it online. It's similar, but it's not exactly the same. It's not going to have the same warranty. This one has an upgraded Viton pump seal that's not going to come with the other one. And the one that you buy online, the SP3202 VSP, is the same motor size, 1.85 horsepower, but it is not dual voltage rated. It is rated for 230 volts only, making that yet another advantage of this pump if you choose to buy it from a brick and mortar dealer. Quickly going to run over the features here. We've got two ports in the back for connecting data cables. We have the electrical service port on the back here, half inch standard threaded connection for your electrical service. The four way rotatable keypad located here. We have the electrical bonding lug located way back here. 
We have the discharge port at two inch or two and a half inch PVC. Same with the suction port, two inch or two and a half. Down here, which you can't see currently, are two winterization plugs. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll get this out of the box here and sit it on the table so you can see those two winterization plugs. But all in all, that's the TriStar VS 1.85 horsepower. That is the brick and mortar protected model that comes with the upgraded Viton pump seal, dual voltage rated. It comes with unions, a data cable. This is a great purchase for a lot of swimming pools out there. As you can see, I have the base underneath the pump right now, which raises the height of the suction port and the discharge port, uh, which may be an advantage to you, maybe not. At least you have the, the, the option, if you wanted or needed to, you could install this without the base under it. It will lower it down a little bit, maybe save you from a little bit more plumbing work that you might have to do to be able to install this if this isn't an exact match for the previous pool pump that you had. So there you have it, the Hayward Variable Speed 1.85 horsepower SP32900 VSP. I can't wait to get this thing installed on my test lab. We'll run it and see how much noise it makes, see how much water it moves, see how much power it consumes. I can't wait. I hope you'll stick around for that. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com. Again, special thank you to Hayward for sending me this pump so that I can review it, make these videos, test it, show swimming pool owners why this is such a good pump and why it probably is something that you should be looking at if you need to buy a new pump for your swimming pool.